Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and it is Block Wednesday. I have taped this in advance of this Wednesday. I taped it over the weekend before I had my nose surgery. So if you are looking for an update for that, go to my website sometime today for this post. I will also do a post on my surgery. Uh, but for today's video and Fridays and Saturdays, they're all done in advance, so I didn't have to worry about it afterwards. Okay, so fall frolic. We are on block seven. And our topic today is all about some outdoor things like football, tailgating, and fairs. All those craft fairs, county fairs, things that happen in the fall. Like I'm not a huge football person, tailgating person, but I know for a lot of you for fall, that is the thing. That is an exciting part of fall uh, to be able to do that with your friends. This is the block. Uh, for me, it's the fairs. Those fall fairs are just, they're crisp, they're outdoors. Um, you know, you sort of take a nice warm drink along with you when you're walking to them. Uh, I've done craft fairs. I vended at craft fairs years ago when I sold some finished goods. <laughs> I had booths at craft fairs. It was always exciting. I loved the whole atmosphere and meeting people and talking to them. So this is a block. I'm going to tell you a little bit about coloration and sort of some decisions I made about colors I'm not going to try to incorporate into these last blocks and stay to the end because I have some quilts from the vault. <laughs> Block seven is all half square triangles and they're nice big ones. So depending on your fabric, you have a way to showcase some of those great prints and you don't have to do the colorations as I have it here. Uh, you can mix and match. So I have a lot of lights shown there. Those could be lights just on the outside. The inside could be darker and that's what I did uh, because I have a lot of light because all of my background is light. So I wanted to make that center a little bit darker, although you could do it the other way depending on your project. So, you know, block seven, there's just nine blocks. Let's take a look at the fabric. I went ahead and got some of the options out to look at it. One thing I did determine is I'm definitely not going to use the pink because at this point with the, these number of blocks, the pink is not feeling as fall-like to me. If I had more blocks, I could definitely work it in. But with just nine blocks, the pink is going to go in the basket and that won't be an option. Not sure if I'm going to use the gray again, but I think I might. Not in this block, but in one of the next two blocks because I have gray in one block and I think I will definitely use uh, use it again in one of them. Okay, so to audition, I decided on this light. Remember, I have a whole group of lights here, and so the light part of each of the patterns for me is one of the prints, not the background fabric. Uh, I like this one a lot. I'm going to use it. Okay, I was thinking maybe I do teal. The bottom row here of that quilt needs a teal in one of the blocks. It also needs uh, red, you know, so and black. So red, black, and teal in one of those three blocks so that it sort of balances out with the other two rows. So I'm going to audition first as like a red teal, but if I do teal in here, what would that other part of the half square triangle be in the middle? I could do a brown. Teal and brown is so very classic. It's kind of interesting because on camera, these two blend together really well. Like, you know, in, in person, they look more distinct, but on film, uh, they kind of blend. You could go with the more um, lighter brown, I guess, cinnamon. Yeah, that's more of a cinnamon color, and that's pretty cool. So what if I don't want to do teal? I could do a, sh a shade of green. There's several greens. Here's a green that has a really nice, that has like a lot of pattern. I really like that piece of fabric. And because it's a bigger block, you're gonna see it a little bit better. And there is the brown that could go with that. Uh, black would also be super awesome. Uh, black just seems to help the, these fabrics a lot. Now I don't have tons of black left, but I only have three blocks. So I think if I did black in this one, then that might be a little, might be a little bit of black for one of the others. Now what I'm auditioning here is I'm just folding it in a square and then folding the square in half and laying it out similar to the pattern. That way I get a feel for what it looks like. It wouldn't have fold open the other way. This way it's apparently is heavier. It's holding it down. <laughs> 
Now I could, instead of green, I could go with yellow. So do a pop of yellow. Yellow could have brown with it. Yellow could have green with it. So there's a lot of combos that are good. Yellow is another thing I want to include in one of these three blocks. You know, so, you know, I could do them all at once. <laughs> there's no teal in here, but red, black, and yellow all in one block. I don't know, I'm leaning towards the green, green and black. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of those on the little Go Me, the little tiny one which is so useful and so effective. I love the vehicle electric one, but it's fun to be able to just open this quick and run something through. I have a bunch of the cubes. And so this cube number, die number three, has the three inch finished. So it says three inch finished, and that's what I'm looking for. Let me just show you those cubes come with, so here's the cube uh, box and, I will go into, says number three is in this box. So it's all marked super well. So number three is in this box. And when you open it, it still says dies one through four. And they're basically die one and two, three, four. It's very logical. So when you open it up, one, two, three, four. And of course I have used this one before. Uh, get him out of its little holder. So there we go. So this is gonna cut uh, two at a time for me and then I need to get the mat out which they include in this small little holder here which has a CD too so that if you in a little booklet so there's all kinds of information but I just need the mat right now Oop. and keep it all tidy these are gorgeous to sit on your shelf so that you can you know I keep the this part on top so that I know what those sizes are. And this is the, what I want to look at. All right, this little guy just opens like this and you crank the handle, super, super easy. Now I want to know what size I'm cutting here. So I will, you can either eyeball it like this or you can just take your ruler and do something a little bit bigger, like a quarter or a little bit bigger. So that would be like a little bit bigger than four inches by a little bit bigger than four and a half, a little bit bigger than four and a half, has to be bigger than four and a half. So I will cut a chunk out and I've got them right sides together. This is the black and the green and I need four of those sets for that middle part, one, two, three, four. So this will cut two at a time. So I can cut all four at once if I just, you know, make, make that happen. Just cut the unit here. There's one. And you want to, uh, if it's angled like this, put your fabric a little bit on that angle so that you're getting the straight of grain really nice. Let me just cut the other one out which was a little bit wider than four and a half. Oh, and if it's a little bit big, I've got enough fabric to play with here. But if you're being really frugal, you want to, you know, check all that so that you don't, you know, lose track. Now this one I made a little bit smaller, so let me just double check it. Yes, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, put this down. Put the little mat on top. Put it in here and crank it and as soon as it starts to go there we go so I just go right through and out come all the pieces perfectly cut so that I can just take pick them up like this and sew them they're right sides together the red and the green and the black and so these four units there's one two three four these four units now you see I was a little bit wide uh, you could be a little bit more frugal when you get really used to it. I'm sure people make just bare, barely any slivers of waste. So then I'll have on the outside here, I will have red and white. So I'll do sets of red and white, two, four, six, eight sets of red and white. And then four sets here, I think of uh, the green and white. I think I'll do green on those four corners. Bring that green out again from the center. Okay. Let me get the rest cut and I will sew it up. Oops, I did them backwards. 
I need to undo those two and flip them around. Ah. These are ready to sew, but I wanted to show you what they look like if I just switch those outer corners to the inside because that's a totally different look. Here I like how the white makes sort of like a circle around this sort of this pinwheel star. But what if you switched? What if you did something like this? And this green became where the black is, and I went like this. And for this one, switched it. You could put black. What if I did this? I mean, it's just a simple change, but look how different that block looks now. And then what if you took these and switched them? And there's another look. So you have options. Don't just stop at what a drawing says. Do a little play, have a little fun, and now I will sew it up. So isn't that fun to see how the block can change just by where the colors go? That's one of the things we will be doing for the next block Wednesday, which is Sweet Dreams. It starts in January, the first Wednesday in January. During that, a part of the thing we will do is create the block twice with fabrics in different positions so that we can actually see that in our quilt. So it'll be super fun, kind of a fun addition. I've never done that with any of my uh, block a week, so I'm pretty excited about it. So let's see the quilts from the vault. <laughs> I got to thinking, I didn't find one of them, but I found a different one. So. There you go. Uh, these are much older quilts. They're in a primitive folk art style. Uh, they're dark fall colors. They are patterns from folk art applique uh, designers that I followed and love still to this day. Um, some are passed away, but some are still around. Um, I don't know whose designs they are. These were either Linda Brannock's or something from Red Wagon, or, you know, I think it was one of those two. There might be a little bit of Jan Paytech in there. So this is the first one, which are my, are these fall crows with the fun baskets. I machine applique these. I did, um, do hand quilting on this one and the other quilt from the vault today. So those are, this This is a lot of fun. Now I have to show you the back because it's not, a, you know, it's just a stripe, but look at this. Apparently I messed up somehow. And so I put a little piece of fabric to cover that corner. <laughs> That's a very pat thing to do, I tell you. Okay, the other one's a little bit bigger. Uh, and I love this because of my birthday. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. And because my birthday is often on Thanksgiving, I had to have a quilt with a turkey on it. And so I'm just gonna hold it up. Here it is, my quilt with the turkey on it. Uh, I will show you a couple of the fabrics. There's a few interesting things. This one is actually all hand applique, needle turn, and it has flannels in it, uh, regular, you know, uh, fabric. It has some home deck fabric in it. And then I hand quilted this one. I don't do a ton of hand quilting but I do some apparently <laughs> looking back at the vault. This fabric here is a sort of home deck fabric and is actually the fabric I used in my very first quilt pattern that I ever published. This, you know, single pattern package that I published, not like in a magazine. Um, this is, this is it. That's the fabric I used. Um, and I just love him. Let me show you the turkey up close because he really is a favorite of mine. There he is. Someday I'm gonna to have to go through my older books and find out whose design the turkey was. I just can't remember. I can't remember whose it was or what book this, I think this is a, a mishmash of things from different books I like. And I also did this horizontal setting because that was the space, you know, I wanted over a credenza, you know, so it could just go up. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the quilts from the vault. <laughs> and for everybody in, the United States. It is Thanksgiving Day tomorrow. Please have an amazing, wonderful day with your family. Uh, it is my favorite holiday. It is all about friends, family, being thankful. Uh, and it's just a quiet, peaceful day, unless there's a football game going on in your backyard. <laughs> so I love you. Mwah. See you online.